GT Countdown. Top 10 most disappointing games of the decade. Although the two often go hand in hand, disappointing never means of poor quality. In this industry, disappointments occur when developers intentionally flare up the imaginations of their consumers and then fail to meet the subsequently inflated expectations. A few hid the truth of the title's mediocrity behind big-name talent. Some preached more than they practiced, and others almost intentionally led their fan base astray. While some of your favorite games might be on this list, they also sadly and infamously came up short of what they were promised to be, making them the most disappointing games of the past 10 years. Number 10, State of Emergency. Riding on the heels of Grand Theft Auto 3, Rockstar pushed State of Emergency as its next big release. You can't really fault a publisher for trying to sell its game, and here's a case where the press was to blame for placing unwarranted hype behind this bland, repetitive shooter. Sure, it has the over-the-top Rockstar aesthetic, and you can beat enemies with the heads of their fallen foes, but the actual game itself lacked substance or any form of long-term engagement. More than anything, State of Emergency proved that a logo on a box does not a game make, and this humorless, gratuitously bloody game had us finally heeding the advice of the announcer. Go, go, go! That was exactly what we did, and never looked back. Number 9. Sonic! <gasps> Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic hasn't exactly been on top of the world in the last few years, but it's hard to believe that Sega let Sonic sink to this level. The spastic camera and twitchy controls that threw you into an endless supply of bottomless pits meant the game was the most fun when you put down your controller and watched your hedgehog autopilot through loops. Even if you liked the weirdly anthropomorphized characters, including a psychic hedgehog from the future and a bat with boobs, the convoluted manimal melodrama was so bad you were actually better off reading internet fanfiction. Watching Sonic romancing a human princess between bouts of borderline broken gameplay and exploring a lifeless city full of lame fetch quests was something even diehard fans could do without. Why can't Sega make a good 3D Sonic game? No special reason. Whoa! Whoa! Number 8. Player. Set to showcase the power of the PS3 with epic aerial battles and motion control dragons, Lair lit the fires of imagination when the platform was still in its infancy. Somebody kill those dragons! This game was one of the most publicized and hyped of the PS3 launch lineup, with developer Factor 5 touting its visual panache at every turn and its six-axis controls to whoever would listen. What players eventually got was an unfinished mess. Lackluster motion controls were the least of its problems, as the game also suffered from a problematic lock-on system, infuriating mission multitasking, and haggard engine performance with choppy frame rates, awkward transitions, and unsightly bugs. It makes no sense. Most disappointing, however, is that Layer's commercial failure undoubtedly contributed to the shutdown of Factor 5, which closed its doors after more than 20 years of game development. There hasn't been bloodshed like this for centuries. Number 7. The situation is out of control. Doom 3. Most believe that id built its name on technology. To some extent, that's certainly true. But it's also managed to feature its tech breakthroughs with at least passable games. Doom 3, with its almost unbelievable level of graphical fidelity, was the poster child of progression in the video game industry for a couple years. Its dark, eerie screenshots were splashed across every major gaming magazine at one point or another, and its shadows and real-time lighting seemed almost too good to be true. Lost, amidst all this salivating over visuals, was the fact that video games are meant to be played and not just looked at. When the game was finally released, it definitely delivered on the visual end, but its monster closet scares and generic shooting ensured that it was a game with more style than substance. Don't you have some orders you need to be following? Once the awe of the graphics wore off, Doom 3 was just a generic shooter, loaded with cheap, predictable thrills. Number 6. Dark Zero in position. Perfect Dark Zero. The sequel to what was the spiritual successor to GoldenEye, on brand new hardware, toting immersive HD visuals and an entrenched online component. Sign us up! Too bad what could have been a system seller ended up being a system staller for those on the fence. Single player was an underwhelming, underdesigned mess with large chevrons pulsing on the floor so you didn't get lost in the confusing level design. And the online, well, get used to lots of acrobatic tumblers trying to cheat a third person camera into upping their kill count. Most matches boiled down to the entire roster of competitors circle strafing in a pile like a herd of angry bees. Zero was a dim day for Joanna Dark, and a harbinger of developer Rare's impending decline. Number 5. Fable. Look, Sonny, 
Keep your mouth shut about this, right? Once upon a time, there was a jester named Peter Molyneux. He liked to tell tall tales of trees growing in real time and video game characters spawning offspring. None of this came to pass in his 2004 RPG Fable. We all trusted the tricky Brit despite the fact that he had already overpromised and underdelivered with his 2001 PC exclusive Black and White. Fable was supposed to be a different story. The old saying goes, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So in this case, we were at least a little at fault for falling for Molyneux's hyperbole, but that doesn't let him completely off the hook. I'm not bailing you out this time, son. At least the game was clever enough to start a franchise, and most outlets bestowed it with at least average reviews. But Linehead Studios forever solidified its reputation as a studio that will meet release dates just a few steps short of the finish line. I've lost Rosie! I left her, and I can't remember where! Number 4. Dante. Devil May Cry 2. A dumbed-down combat system, a lame tie-in with diesel jeans, a second disc with cheap tacked-on content. No, we're not describing a long-forgotten movie license game from 2003. We're talking about Devil May Cry 2, the sequel to one of the most refreshing action games to ever see release. Though Capcom eventually went on to redeem the series in later installments, you wouldn't know it from the second chapter. Gone were the creative sensibilities that defined Dante's debut, swapped out for a more earnest, shallower experience. Case in point, there's one boss that you can kill seconds after he appears on screen. We were literally devastated at how poor the second installment in the series was, but at least Capcom recognized the problem and got the series back on track before it was too late. Number 3. Metal Gear Solid 2. Let's get one thing straight, Metal Gear Solid 2 was not a bad game, but it's hard to overlook one simple ugly truth. Was it the much-teased tanker level only appearing as the first proof-of-concept hour of the game? We'll give it a pass. Yes. The incomprehensible plot that irreparably sent the series canon into disarray? Forgivable. The what? No, when all is said and done, the fact that our favorite SOCOM-slinging stealth hero got benched for some dude doing naked cartwheels is what really grinds our gears. What the what? Oh my god! Sons of Liberty still turned out okay, eventually paving the way for Snake Eater years later. It's just the industry's ultimate bait-and-switch that left a mark. It's okay. No one is blaming you. It wouldn't have been so bad if there were some kind of clue that a new character would play a major role, but to show Snake playing through the levels that would ultimately be tackled by Raiden was just downright mean. They betrayed you? I admit that. Sorry, Kojima. We did not write it. <laughs> Number 2. Dai Katana. Great. Just great. Dai Katana is the embodiment of games industry hubris. The brainchild of John Romero, once a hotshot developer at id, Dai Katana was announced amidst a flurry of hype theretofore unseen. Then, one poorly conceived magazine ad later, and any goodwill the public might have had, was flushed down the toilet. As it happened, Dai Katana's naysayers got their wish. After a multitude of missed deadlines and enough internal drama to fuel industry gossip mongers for years, Dai Katana was released and it was total garbage. <laughs> Enemy AI was terrible. Monsters knew only to charge straight at you, damn whatever was in your way. Your companion AI was worse, bordering on suicidal, which, given that they had to stay alive or it was game over, made the game almost unplayable. I'll be right there! The game's setting and story were completely forgettable. The list went on and on. Too bad for you! <laughs> if Dai Katana isn't the poster child for crappy, overhyped games, it's close. No! Number one. Star Wars Galaxies. Forget the game creating all sorts of lore atrocities like having gangs of Jedi roaming around in Episode 4 universe. Sony Online dropped the Death Star on its online users stronger than anyone this past decade. Galaxies was a unanimous disappointment, asking players to basically put their lives on hold to even hope of becoming a Jedi. The grind in this game ground fans into a pulp, and just when a group of extraordinarily dedicated players began to make real progress, Sony pulled the rug out from underneath them. Mm. Facing a dwindling population, it was decided to streamline the game's progression, effectively negating years of work by an elite group of players. The news of these new game enhancements hit a mere day before they were implemented, and stealthily one day after the release of the third expansion pack, Trials of Obi-Wan. Galaxies is one of the most anticipated RPGs of all time, which makes it easy to hand it the title as the most disappointing game of the past 10 years. Don't regret this.